Let's look at some simple equilibrium reactions and, and get familiar with the equilibrium expression. Let's say I have the reaction between hydrogen gas and iodine gas. Remember that they're both diatomic. And the product of this reaction is hydrogen iodide gas. Again, to balance it, I'd need the two, as indicated here. Um, again, hydrogen and iodine are diatomic, and so I have to remember that when I write this reaction. The equilibrium expression for this reaction in terms of the concentrations is equal to the products raised to the coefficients divided by the reactants. So I would have this expression. You'll notice that I squared the HI concentration, which is on top, because that is the product and the coefficient is 2. The concentrations of H2 and I2 are both multiplied in the denominator. So this is my expression for my equilibrium constant equilibrium constant in terms of concentration, and that's why I have the little C subscript. I also could write the expression for the equilibrium constant in terms of pressures. It just which one I use just depends on what data uh, was given. All right, suppose that a student ran this reaction in the laboratory and collected information on the concentrations of each of these species at equilibrium. And let's say the student discovered that at equilibrium, all right, at some temperature, it is totally possible that these concentrations would be at equilibrium. So if these are the concentrations at equilibrium, what is the equilibrium constant at this temperature? We simply plug in the values and punch the numbers into our calculator. So here we go. We want two significant figures in our answer because of the data, and an equilibrium constant is unitless. Now you might say, well, in this case it is because all of my molarities cancel. It's not always going to be apparent that the molarities cancel, but if you go on and take physical chemistry, you'll learn the trick to getting the molarities to cancel. For us at the general chemistry level, we're just going to remember that the equilibrium constant is indeed unitless, so just don't worry about units. It's not often you hear a chemistry instructor say that, but don't worry about the units here. So my equilibrium constant is 4.6. The magnitude of the equilibrium constant, if we calculate it or are given it, give us some information about the position of the equilibrium for the reaction. Since the equilibrium constant is a ratio, always a ratio of products over reactants, it's not exactly products or reactants because I have some stoichiometric coefficients in there and I'm multiplying them all together, but it, it's, you get the idea. If my equilibrium constant is greater than 1, that means this ratio gives me a numerical value that's greater than 1, which means my products are in higher concentration than my reactants in general. So an equilibrium constant that is greater than 1 is often referred to as a product favored equilibrium. The position of the equilibrium is product favored. Or I can talk about the equilibrium lies to the right since there are more products. If on the other hand I have that the equilibrium constant is less than 1, that means my ratio would give me a smaller numerical value than 1. My reactants would be um, on average larger than my products at equilibrium. Reactants are larger than products, and this would be considered a reactant favored reaction. I also could talk about the fact that um, the equilibrium lies to the left, or that this is a reactant favored reaction, or the reaction lies to the left, or this is a, oh, I'm saying the same thing over and over again. So if equilibrium constant is less than 1, this, the reactants would be larger than the products at equilibrium, which means this is a reactant favored reaction. If we look at that equilibrium constant in a little more detail, we can see some mathematical relationships. Since all reactions can be thought of as forward or reverse, if I write this reaction in the reverse direction, and I'm going to get lazy and not put my states because we know what they are, then my new equilibrium constant, which is not the same as my previous one, so let me make it a, put a prime on it. My new equilibrium constant is going to equal H2 concentration times I2 divided by HI squared. You will notice the mathematical relationship between these two reactions. If I reverse a reaction, I take one over, I flip, if you will, the equilibrium constant. 
So my new reaction, once it's reversed, has an equilibrium constant that's equal to one divided by the old equilibrium constant. Reversing a reaction flips the equilibrium constant. If, for whatever reason, I needed to write the reaction, let's start with this blue one. Let's say I needed to write the reaction as 4HI is in equilibrium with 2H2 plus 2I2. Then look at what happens to the equilibrium constant. And again, it's not this one, that one, it's a new one. Let me call it a double prime. If I write this new equilibrium constant expression, I end up with H2 squared times I2 squared, all divided by HI to the fourth. Mathematically, these two equilibrium constants are related in that my new equilibrium constant is my old one squared. In other words, everybody is simply squared from this expression to give me my new equilibrium constant. I multiplied the reaction by two, and this raised each of my concentrations to the second power. So when you multiply a reaction by a, by a factor, you will raise the equilibrium constant by that factor. If I have to multiply an equilibrium reaction by three for whatever reason, then the new equilibrium constant is the old one cubed. If I have to take all of my coefficients in half, then my new equilibrium constant is the old equilibrium constant raised to the one-half power, which is the square root. So we can manipulate equilibrium constants mathematically um, if we have to manipulate the reactions. And there will be times that we do have to manipulate the reactions. One last mathematical trick. Let's say for whatever reason, and you can probably think of a couple reasons why, you need to add two reactions together. Let's see what happens to their equilibrium constants. I'm going to write out two reactions that we'll add. All right, for time's sake, I have not indicated, but everybody is a gas in this partic these particular reactions. So everybody's gaseous. I have K1, which is the equilibrium constant for this first expression, and K2, which is the equilibrium constant for the second reaction. Their formulas would be, All right, I do not have two equilibrium constants that are related to each other. I have equilibrium constants for two separate reactions. But if I were to add these two reactions together, first of all, the O2 would cancel, so I'd be left with 2CO plus 2H2O is in equilibrium with 2CO2 plus 2H2. The new equilibrium constant for this final reaction would have this formula. Can you see mathematically that this final equilibrium constant is simply the product of the first two equilibrium constants? If I take the expression for K1 and I multiply by the expression for K2, my O2's concentration ends up canceling and I end up with CO2 squared on top, H2 on top, squared on top, CO squared on the bottom, and H2O squared on the bottom. So when I add reactions, I multiply their equilibrium constants.